Hi guys, hope you're all doing well and this will be the first video of the entire series that I will be creating for setting up a multi-factor authentication server and in this video we are going to talk about the installation process. Let's start off with the prerequisites. According to me, the very first thing that you need to decide is uh, the number of users that are going to use MFA service because when it comes to performance below mentioned is the chart that will list the amount of memory allocation that is required for your machine either a physical machine or a vm that should be able to perform as expected so let's say i'm going to deploy the mfa service for somewhere around 100,000 to 200,000 users in that case i need a machine that has at least 16 gb of ram now you can choose any of uh, the configuration that's listed here depending upon your environment and once again it's a recommendation from microsoft and that is something which can be checked in the article that i'll be sharing in the description section the next part uh, that you need to focus will be uh, the hardware requirement that means when you will install the setup file of azure mfa server what are the couple of things or what are the limitations or what's actually required to get the setup completed is the very first thing that there must be 200 mb of hard disk space i know it's very less but still since it was listed i tried covering this as well the setup file is available and can be installed on both the processors 32 bit or 64 bit and 1 GB or greater RAM is required for the installation. So the part that we were discussing before that was moreover related to performance but for the installation you only need 1 GB or greater RAM to proceed with the setup. The next thing is operating system. Anything above Windows Server 2003 SP1 SP2 will work. Anything above Windows Server 2003 and in fact there is a complete list which you can check from one of the articles that I will be sharing in the description and apart from these two uh, requirements there are three endpoints that should be white listed from your firewall so that they can successfully communicate on port number 443 because these are the three endpoints which are actually used by the MFA service itself and if you think that you have strict firewall deployment and uh, there is hard-coded rules which is not going to allow any of the unknown ip communication the same article which i will be listing in the description section has the ip address list as well the next thing that we will be talking about is planning your deployment now depending upon the size of uh, the deployment uh, depending upon the size of the number of users that are going to use mfa service you can have a single mfa server or multiple mfa server the fundamental of having multiple mfa server is to end up having an environment which is highly available that means achieving high availability now if you have a single mfa server that will be known as master so that means what the very first mfa server that you're going to set up is known as master mfa server and then as you add on more servers these are known as slaves or secondary mfa server now how does these servers work they actually query the read and write copy of the configuration database that's created on the master server now the question comes what is the purpose behind that is that let's say for some reason your master server is offline or it's not available because of some network issues or because of some deployment issues in those cases your secondary mfa server or slave mfa server will be able to process the second factor authentication but uh, there is one more information which is very important that anything that is more over related to configuration changes will not be able to complete so what do i mean by that that if you are trying to add users or if you're trying to make any change in terms of services that is not uh, supported or that will not get completed until unless you have master server back online so this is what basically required and this is how the setup works in terms of deployment the database that is 
uh, registered or that is created is some is known as phone factor dot pf data and the prime and the secondary servers actually pull this information with the help of rpc now let's move on to the setup part for which i've already set up a vm and i'm going to switch to that now in order to install MFA server, what you need to do is you have to log into portal.azure.com, then navigate to Azure Active Directory, and here you will get the option of MFA server. The moment you will click on MFA server, you will get two options. The first one of downloading the MFA server, and the other one will be of activation of uh, the credentials which are required to activate MFA server. Now you will only get this option when you have a license and a full mfa full version of mfa license what do i mean by this that this is something which is available with the premium license of azure active directory as well as ems so e3 and e5 they both offer azure multi-factor authentication license which you can assign to a specific user which you will be using to activate the MFA server and let me just show you the assignment option which will be available so for this trial tenant I have EMS E5 and whenever I will try to assign any license to a particular user make sure that you have Azure multi-factor authentication and this is who assigned to the respective user who is going to activate or or the account with which you are trying to set up the entire lab or if you're trying to do any POC so once the user is like once the user has the license and you're getting the option to download mfa server the moment you will click on download you will be redirected to this particular page and from here you can download the mfa server for this particular demo i have already downloaded the setup file and now what i'll do is i'll go ahead and run that setup file now when i will install uh, or when i will start the installation i will be getting a two prompts uh, that will request me to acknowledge the installation of two libraries which are required for mfa so the very first time when you will be installing mfa server these are the two libraries which are installed on the server which will be acting as a master mfa server and once you install both these libraries then the mfa server setup will get started now in the installation of those two files are completed and i'm going to agree the terms and conditions for the setup of the mfa server this will be the folder which will be created while the installation gets completed and which will be holding the logs the installation logs as well if you want you can change this location but for this demo we'll choose the default location itself so once this setup will get completed before going and before going ahead and making any change what you can do is if you want you can go ahead and refer to the log section and this will give you an idea about what or how this service uh, was installed so this will be something which will be just for your information and that will give you a better idea about how did the setup got started what are the prerequisites which are being checked and depending upon that when the setup got completed what are the things or which service account is being used which service run under which service account or what kind of privileges required these are a couple of things which can be checked from these logs and once uh, now since you you got the idea about these particular logs what we'll move now is we'll move on with the configuration part so you'll click on start and then click on multi-factor authentication server now this will bring up the very first interface wherein it will ask you to activate the MFA server for that what we need is we need a credential that will be generated from uh, portal.azure.com itself now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these credentials so again what I did is I just clicked on generate and this has generated a activation credential which I will be typing in here and I will type in the password as well and this will activate the MFA instance which we have just installed now once the installation is completed you will get a prompt 
to join this particular MFA server into an existing group or make this MFA server as a part of an existing group or you can create a custom group as well so for this demo we are going to choose and we are going to add this to the default group itself now the moment you will complete uh, the part of adding uh, the server to a group uh, this is the change that you will observe on the left hand side itself of the console that you have rest of the options available now which you can go ahead and customize as per your requirement now the first thing that we can observe here that this particular server on which we installed MFA is now getting listed as the master server and rest of the servers that we are going to add as a part of our deployment will be slaves or it will be secondary servers for this particular demo itself, what we'll do is we'll try importing a couple of users from Azure AD and we'll check how the testing process works whenever you import any user. So in order to import users to MFA console, what you can do is you can click on users and then click on import from Active Directory. You can import the entire domain or you can import a specific OU itself. So the moment I will import this, one user will get added and that is user at conceptswork.com. Now, this icon that you, sh that you see here is actually a message. Likewise, this particular user is not enabled. So the moment you will enable that user, that icon will be gone. So this user is now enabled. That means MFA will cater the second factor authentication request for this particular user, but again, this user doesn't have any sort of information saved that will be used for MFA. So what you what the change you can or what changes you can do to test this functionality is you can create a test account and manually update the contact information. And the moment you will click on apply, this part will get changed. OK, and then you can click on test. Now for this you do need the password of that user object that's what I'm saying that this is something which will help you to test that whether the setup went fine or not as per this test that we are doing it should fail for sure because this is not a valid number but once this test gets failed I'll upload or I'll change the number and then I'll show you what is the message that you get on the screen if you enter a valid entry or if uh, the MFS server has a valid configuration or a number that can be reached by the MFA service. So this is what you get uh, if you have mentioned uh, information that cannot be reached by the MFA service. Now what I'll do is I'll update this information and I'll try revalidating the account once again. So I have updated the information now and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on test and then again I'm be typing the test user account password and then we'll click on test just to check if I get a call or not so I did got a call and that was authenticated and what I see here is authentication successful so this was all about uh, the installation and in the next video we are going to talk about the user portal so let's go ahead with a quick summary of what all we discussed. So in this video, we discussed about what is the hardware requirement. Why do you need a global admin credential? Because that does require license assignment. From where you can download the MFA setup. The full version of MFA setup does require Azure AD Premium or a EMS license and the credential that is required for you to activate MFA server. If you guys have any feedback, suggestions, please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com and I will be happy to answer all your queries. Thank you so much. Do watch the entire series and if you have learned something new, please feel free to subscribe. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.